Okay, so for this one, I've decided to kind of do a little bit of frequently asked questions about the lawsuit process or the litigation process at a very high level, um, you know, as a as kind of a disclaimer right from the beginning, although these general steps that I'm going to go through are similar throughout every court and every state, there are really different rules on how some of these things are applied and followed. And so make sure that if, if you ever have to go down this road that you obviously talk with an attorney that understands the local rules and is very familiar with, in this case, with business stuff and with the specific claims that you need to raise. Not all attorneys know all these things or practice these things very regularly. So make sure you do your due diligence in, in finding the right ones that can help you with the lawsuit and the dispute resolution process. And that being said, um, th this is kind of a 10,000 foot view. These are the, I've outlined them as 10 steps. They don't always go in this sequence. And obviously there's lots of moving parts, not just these 10 things, but I think this gives us a general structure and a general expectation for how lawsuits proceed. So, uh, I mean, frankly, there's a pre-step, but um, you know, the precept is you're trying to resolve some dispute or there's some situation and for whatever reason it doesn't get resolved. So smack, we hit into step one, uh, a lawsuit is filed. So whether you are the one that filed the lawsuit or somebody else does and you get served, that's the start of, of a litigation process. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, when I say litigation, it could be through an arbitration um, organization. It could be through your local district or trial court. Um, some states call the trial court the superior court, but whatever it is, the place where lawsuits begin. And, you know, and having said that, there are even smaller uh, courts called small claims court or justice court where um, smaller financial disputes can be heard and potentially resolved. So anyway, um, but wherever it is, step one is the same. A lawsuit is begun, a dispute is filed, a claim or a complaint is filed. And then the other side, you might be the other side, or if you file the lawsuit, then the other side that will need to file an answer. If you get served, in step one, you didn't start the lawsuit, but you get served, you have to file the answer. Oftentimes you might have claims against them. And so you would also file your counterclaim at that point. Then, you, you know, one thing to keep in mind here with step two is, and again, every state's going to have different rules for how this proceeds. Some states have very strict guidelines for the timing involved in these steps, and some have more general uh, loose principles and uh, outlines, but um, in whatever state you find yourself, you're going to have what feels like a pretty short window from when a lawsuit is filed until a response of some kind is is due. And so I, I just I throw this out there because if you don't have a regular business attorney that you work with or somebody that you handle lawsuits and those kinds of disputes with, it, it would make sense to try to explore and find somebody now before those kind of situations come up because the timeline involved is very short. And so if it's only two or three or four weeks, you know, it might take you a couple of weeks to find a potential attorney and then get a consult scheduled. And then he or she may be able to take your case. But if they don't take your case, now your time's even shorter. Anyway, um, it's better to find somebody and build a relationship before this situation ever comes up. But in what, in any event, um, let's assume an answer is filed um, either by you or by the other side, and then you move forward. Um, every, almost every court, except for maybe small claims, but most other courts are going to have an initial disclosure requirement or required disclosures. And this is just sharing uh, basic information about the case. You know, hey, what, what, what do you kind of think the dispute is? How much is the damages that you think is going to be here? Who are some of the potential witnesses? This doesn't mean you can't amend it or change some of this information later as you learn more. But 
they will they kind of I mean from a policy standpoint the courts want to make sure that you have sufficient information to be able to um, back up your claim and and start sharing this information now step four again it doesn't necessarily have to happen as the fourth item but um, can happen at different times but step four um, Throughout the process, there, there could be motions for certain things. There could be hearings to resolve certain issues, to clarify some of the preliminary things that have been filed with the court, maybe to file to try to dismiss the case altogether if you think you have a basis to do so. There could be um, a number of things uh, throughout the case. So I just throw that out that there's an up and down process that can go on in this overall process. Uh, you know, lawsuit um, life. And I, I kind of think of it like a chess match because there's lots of different moving pieces and there is a strategy to a lawsuit. And uh, and it, it's so that's why finding the attorney in step one and two is super important because you want to make sure somebody not only knows how to do it, but also can handle it in a strategy way that makes sense with you. Anyway, um, so there's motions and hearings that are going to go on. And then five, six, and seven, the, I, I've listed them in sequence, but they don't always happen in this order. Yeah, but throughout the process, there are settlement efforts. There are mediation, potentially, me, potentially mediation efforts um, to try to informally resolve the case. And there could be written discovery. And this process is where your attorney or their attorney sends uh, questions, they'll call it interrogatories, or they might send a request for documents or, um, or a request for certain admissions of information or facts, um, and, and any number of those things. And uh, then you have an obligation to respond. And so this is a way of gathering information. They can also gather information or facts through depositions. If you've ever gone through those, they can take you know a couple of hours to even potentially a couple of days, depending on the state rules that, uh, that govern your case. But depositions can occur. They're not required, but they're an option. Once all these things are completed through step seven, we're gonna generically say that that's the end of fact discovery. And so the fact finding period is done. And there's a potential in step eight to try to end the lawsuit with what's called a motion for summary judgment. And uh, this doesn't always win. And it may not even make sense in your situation because essentially what you're arguing when you file something like this is you're, look, you're asking the judge to decide the case as a matter of law, which means that you assume that all of the facts that have been shared and the information that, that has been gathered is true information. And so the judge isn't going to look at how true the information might be, but let's just assume it's true. And even if it is true, then you should still win. And so that's, that's a very high threshold to win. And so this doesn't always work, but it is a strategy. It is an, a possible option to try to resolve a case. If it doesn't work, or if you and your attorney don't feel like that motion makes sense from a financial standpoint, because you don't really have a good argument to win, then you'll get into step nine, which is the trial prep. This is where you're gonna have additional motions and hearings to um, exclude certain things, maybe to talk about experts, maybe to talk about juries, if you have that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, there's a lot of stuff that goes on here. And again, you know, step five, the settlement and mediation efforts are continually ongoing throughout. Um, and then eventually, if it doesn't resolve, then you get to a step 10, which is the actual trial itself. And I haven't put it on here, but there are, are typically grounds to try to appeal um, the outcomes of cases. Um, not everybody does that. And then depending on how the trial is resolved, there could be judgments and there could be collection efforts. So there's other stuff, but I think just looking at a high level is super helpful. The other side, outside of understanding just kind of the general process and timeline is more specifically the cost and the timing. Uh, so this is by no means a guarantee. This is a general range that I've seen 
uh, for small to mid-sized law firms. Obviously, big law firms um, that charge at a very different rate, may, these fees may be quite small to them. Um, but for most of the companies that I work with, they are small to mid-sized companies. And by small to mid-sized, I'm talking about up to, you know, 10, 20, 30 million dollars in gross revenue. Um, and then the small down in the, you know, you know, 500,000 up to a million. So in that range of companies, these are the kinds of costs that most of your cases would probably handle. Um, this isn't a guarantee, but, um, and the range really depends because there is a range of steps that can go on in a case. And where you stop in that case will depend kind of on where you stop in the legal fee cost and potentially the expert and, and other court costs that might be involved. It depends um, on what's needed. And so those costs also vary. The timing is the biggest factor here. You know, timing in lawsuits can take from months to years, depending on whether or not you can get an early win or a default judgment against the other side or a settlement of some kind or anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of a case right now that uh, that was filed about three or four years ago that's still ongoing. And uh, so by no means do cases resolve overnight. And even if there are very few issues that are being fought about, that it is still a process and you do still go through this step by step in order to make it work. And um, it's good to think about this stuff as you're considering going down this road. I mean, generally speaking for my clients, I almost tell them as a rule that other than small claims, which has different thresholds, if they're going to a district court or superior court of some kind, if the dispute is for less than $50,000, they should be considering a serious settlement before going to court. Because the costs of hiring an attorney, which is oftentimes required when a business appears in those kinds of courts, because that cost is potentially so large, if you don't have a dispute that makes it worth it, then, then I wouldn't go down that road. And maybe that sounds super silly to, to recommend or to advise, but uh, yeah, I talk myself out of cases often because of, it's not in the financial interest of my client. Unfortunately, there's a lot of attorneys that don't have that approach and will often sell you on the potential way in which you're right and you can win. But when you look at all the net financial benefit, you end up losing because you might not be able to get all your attorney's fees back and you have to pay that in advance. Again, it comes down to this step one, step two, make sure you build a relationship with an attorney that you like, that you trust, that's good, that knows, knows how to help you and your company so that you're going to get the good advice here and not not the uh, self-interested advice sometimes that that others might give. Bottom line, uh, you know, there's lots of ups and downs. I mean, my firm is licensed in multiple states throughout the country to handle lawsuits. And so feel free to reach out. We can chat about it. If I can help in your case, uh, if it's a good situation, I will happily do so. If I can't, I will try to connect you with somebody else, um, somebody that I know and trust. Uh, to take the Google out of it. I mean, uh, that's the probably the biggest risk you take. So if you don't have somebody that you know yet, uh, feel free to give me a call. We can set up a time to chat. I can give you some ideas on some other attorneys if I can't personally help or if it's not a good fit. But in the meantime, um, yeah, I think it'd be great if we uh, um, connected in order to go through your situation so that we can potentially find out if this is going to, to be a, you know, a good relationship and if your case can get resolved quickly. Um, anyway, look forward to chatting with you.